the rigid transformations, which are also called isometries. And we'll look more at those. And so they're called, the, the different rigid transformations are translations and rotations and reflections. But remember, they're called rigid transformations. Last 45 minutes of class, you're going to be able to work on your test. Uh, so here's our objectives. We've looked at the last few days. You need to be able to actually do the transformation. You need to be able to identify the preserved elements under each transformation and identify what transformation has been applied to a pre-image. All right. Yeah, so we ended on this translation yesterday, correct? Does that sound accurate? Okay. We did the translation. We did not answer the question. Is that correct? Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Uh, you should already have your translation down on that piece of paper. I want you to go to the different sections and erase the boards uh, for your section. One thing I want to point out is, if you go to a chalkboard, you do not spray the water on the board. Where do you spray the water? On the towel. On the washcloth, and then you lightly wipe it off so that you don't tear up the chalk. Um, let's do this. Uh, who has not been to the chalkboard yet? Which groups? Every group's been? Y'all have not been? All right, group five, you're going to get to be one of the groups of the chalkboard. What? We haven't been to the TV. All right, y'all can go to the TV then. Uh, group seven, where have y'all not been yet? That's only one, though. All right, sorry to give them the TV. I'll remind me so I can give you the TV in the future. Group seven, let's put you over at this whiteboard. Get you across the room a little bit. Yes, Jordan. Can we get the whiteboard? Jordan's group one can get this whiteboard. I haven't right. assigned y'all anywhere, have you? Have I? Let's go to chalkboard over there, and then group three, you'll be at this whiteboard as well. All right, let's move. Uh, we don't have to write our answers down on the paper. We need to write our answers on the board. We'll have a whole class discussion about it soon. Let's actively collaborate. I did have to. She said I can do it at home. Uh, either one. I don't care which one. Which side. Yeah, 
like. Jordan, if you were doing the math you're supposed to, you wouldn't even notice. <laughs> Like Lily, you're just doing work. Make sure you actually talk to them and checking in. Yeah. So you're not just doing work. Like it looks like you're stuck a little bit on C, aren't you? If the slope of H, the line segment HI is five halves, then what's the slope of, and you even say it, H, look at it again. I don't know that it's negative five halves. Here's H prime, here's I prime, right? And you label it. That's going up one, two, three, four, five, and it's going to the right too, isn't it? I want you to look at those line segments again. What do they kind of look like to you? No, look at this line segment and look at this line segment. They look negative five. No, what is it? Yes, but if we're talking about slow, they might look starts with a P. Do they look parallel to you? What do you know about the lines that are parallel? Yeah, right here. I think it's negative five. They never intersect. They never intersect. What else do we know about lines that are parallel? No, that's like they're perpendicular. Say that again. Oh yeah, if lines are parallel, don't they have the same slope? Don't those look like they're parallel? And if you check the slope, is up five to the right too? Yeah. Five pounds. Same slope. They're parallel to each other. We need to pay attention to stuff like that. Jordan, you're not even remotely trying to do some math to learn right now. Jordan, put it off before I write you up. I want to I want to pause and I want to point this out. When you look at these two triangles, right? Just pre the image. Not only is it orientation preserving, it looks like it's literally in the same direction, right? <laughs> So y'all are making things more complicated than it has to be. Yeah. 
congruent. Remember, those measures are preserved, but those images are congruent. Right. Uh, the measurements can be preserved, but the images themselves are congruent. And then we saw an interesting case here. The slope of uh, line segment HI was 5 halves. The slope of H prime I prime was what? Did you check that? Did you actually like, look at the, the graph? Because I think this was here, oh. and then this was here. How far up is that? I think that's the same slope, isn't it? So Cody, I think you assumed that to be true, right? OK, and this is what we need to keep in mind. When do you have opposite and reciprocal slopes? When those line segments are perpendicular. perpendicular. I want you to look at this again. Does this H prime I prime line segment look perpendicular to H I? No, what do they look? Parallel. Parallel. Look at those slopes. They are the same. same. Cody, what's going on? Just leave me alone. Cool. All right, we'll do uh, so, those slopes are definitely the same. We have parallel line segments. And so, I will point this out. When you looked at the reflections earlier, were our line segments parallel? Like, look back at numbers one and two. When you look at those, uh, those slopes, were they parallel to each other? I see negative two sevenths for BC and B prime C prime is positive two sevenths. So those aren't parallel. When I look at the other page, I see 6 sevenths and negative 6 sevenths. Those are not parallel. So the slopes being parallel, or those segments being parallel, only exist with what transformation, or at least so far? Translation. Okay, right? Translations are where we have that idea of um, parallel. All right? Uh, coordinates of H are 6, negative 2, then the coordinates of H prime were what? They were... Um, I think zero, 1 if you look right here, right? Yeah. Um, and I saw a lot of us struggling here with E through G, but here's the thing, right? I saw one group very successfully put point A up here, it's 3, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, negative 2, sorry. And so translate to the right 6 and up 3. Put a prime here. Could you, could you just graph that? Very much so. But I will point out, you can't do that when you get down to G right here. You need to recognize that you can't do that when you get down to G. So we need to also remember that translations are associated with what mathematical operation? Huh? What did you say? Is it multiplication or is it addition and subtraction? Addition and subtraction. Remember, literally moving to the right, translating it is the same as adding. Moving to the left is the same as subtracting, subtracting from the x. Moving up is the same as adding to which variable? Y. The y, right? Translating is associated with addition. Think about it. This was translated to the left 6. Hey, what's 6 minus 6? Zero. Zero. It was translated up three. What's negative two plus three? One. Oh. And so when I look at A prime, translating six left, three minus six is negative three. Negative two plus three is one. Now y'all need to be careful with F. I don't know that I saw anyone with F correct. No. Ooh, I did have one group with it correct. Who? What did, what did you put for F? Okay, so how did you get F? You plotted on the coordinate plane. Okay, so you all just uh, plotted on the coordinate plane. You put the negative 2, 2 on there, right? Yeah. Negative 2, 2? Yeah, and then go to the right 6 and then go down 3. Interesting. Why would you go to the right 6 and down 3? Because... <laughs> Um, it's A prime, so then... Please notice, yeah, this is A prime, that or Z prime. 
That was after the transformation was done. So we need to go. Well, we need to go backwards, right? Opposite, the opposite, right? We need the opposite of those directions. We need to reverse what happened, right? So, yeah, notice, instead of subtracting 6, what can I do with negative 2? Add. add 6 to get 4. Instead of adding 3 to this 2, we would subtract 3. Okay? So, notice the operations that we're applying for D through F. For those of y'all who said things like negative y, x, and whatever, that, that's not true here because what operation is associated with a translation? Addition. Addition, subtraction. What should you do to the x to get the image? Ah, thank you. Um, if you could just place the boxes on the back counter for me. Thank you. Hello, Pat, man. Hey, uh, Thomas, am I teaching you math right now? How about you focus on that? How about you focus? Thank you, sir. All right, so what's happening to this x value right here? You can raise your hand, share your ideas if you have an idea, because I just hear people kind of mumbling over it. Nathan? Wait, what? I thought we were translating up 3 and left 6. Guys, what did we literally do? For D and E, Emily. Okay, I can see why you're thinking that, but okay, I want y'all to pause and think about this again. What did I literally do to this three to get negative three? I subtracted six because it was a translation to the left six. So literally, it's three minus six. I took the x value and I subtracted six. So what am I doing to this x value? Subtracting I'm subtracting 6. Right? It's not just making it negative. It's not always going to be negative, but it is always going to subtract 6. What's happening to the y? Sure about that? Guys, what did we do to the y? Negative. Didn't we add 3 to it? I don't know. Well, Joey, what was the transformation? It was translating, <coughs> uh, well, it was left 6, but remember, that's only going to affect my x. What was happening to the y? Going up 3. So we were adding 3. Right? Yeah. Every point, we subtracted 6 from the x, we added 3 to the y. Okay? And so, again, the translation is a special case where we get parallel segments. And so, uh, I know this one's being a little bit difficult, which is why I went ahead and brought it back together. What is parallel to HI? So remember, we, uh, we want the um, transformed function. So I need a, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and up three from there would be right here. There's my triangle. Um, so what's parallel to HI? And what was their slope? So they are parallel, Joey, but remember, the slope is the rise divided by the run, so up 5 and to the right 2. Notice again, because some of y'all are still not doing this, what am I putting up there to help me know which direction? The arrows. The arrows. Right? Vector. Those are types of vectors, just horizontal and vertical vectors. But I'm putting those arrows to indicate the direction, aren't I? Am I doing my rise first or my run first? Rise. The rise is always going to be first, so I can do rise divided by run. And I put my plus or my minus to indicate it. Okay, so the slope is five halves. All right? I'll What's be, another? I'll be honest, I still have a, kind of a habit of doing the, the going, like, to the player. Don't do that. That's just the way I was taught. Well, that was wrong. That's why we struggle, because we were taught wrong things. How do you calculate slope? What does it say? Y is 128. That's not slope, man. That's the slope intercept form of the line. What is slope? What? Rise divided by. Notice, and this is right, and I'll say this. Technically, could you do horizontal first? Yes. Oh, 
here's what you're thinking about, Joey. You're thinking about when you have a point, you go left to right first. Like when I have the point negative three, one, yeah, I go to the left three and then up one. But when I'm talking about slope, what is the first thing in slope? So you need to do the vertical piece first. Then you do the run. You're mixing up slope and point. And you're probably not the only one who's doing that. But you've got to recognize, and that's why I write out my formula, guys. Like, I cannot emphasize this enough. Create a roadmap of where you're trying to go. Oh, I want slope. Write out the slope formula. I was doing that too. All right? Okay, so we want to look at GH. Even without calculating, what do we know GH is going to be parallel to? G Right. Now, we'll point this out. Will those be parallel in rotation and in reflections? No. No. That's only something special for translation. Um, as you check it, it's up three to the right six. And I want to point this out. Three divided by six. Y'all know that these calculators can literally do that for you, right? One like half. simplify it. It is one half. But I want y'all to pick up your calculators and type in just three divided by six real quick. Did it give you the fraction one half? Okay. Yeah. These calculators can be your best friend to simplify those fractions. You don't have to do it by head in your head. We need to use things effectively. All right. So then finally, G I is parallel to G prime I prime. Okay. Line segment. All right. Uh, and I don't know that slope off the top of my head. That's uh, a lot. Oh, it's a over. A. It's what? Oh yeah, that makes sense. If you look right here, it's just up one to the right one, isn't it? So that's the slope of one. Notice, and be careful, it's not eight over eight, it'd be eight divided, divided, divided by eight. eight. And what is eight divided by eight? One. One, one right? Last few minutes to get some problems done before we take our test, or finish up our test. Um, I want you to notice this PQ right here, what is that? Any guesses? That's the It does look like a ray. Look at what the directions call it though. Vector. Vector. Notice the arrow, and so the difference between this and a ray is that technically this doesn't go forever. Notice there's a little point right here. That arrow just tells us which direction it's going. Mm -hmm. I will say this, you don't have to stress about that because I'm not going to test you on that detail, but that's just something helpful here. Right, so I want to point this out, right? This vector, remember, is how much I'm translating by. So if I start here, how much am I translating to the right? Five. And how far am I translating up or down? Zero. Up two. Up two. So what am I going to do to point E? How far to the right? Five, five and up two. two. So notice to the right, five and up two puts me here. Notice how I literally just took vector PQ and, and drew it right there? And then this would be E prime. There's my vector PQ again, and that is F prime. And there's my vector PQ again, and that is B. Yeah. Oof, man, I hate myself right now. Anyone know why? No. Can it intersect with the vector? No. Look at those colors. It is. Blue and orange. Wait, I don't care enough to change it. I'm competing. All right. Oh, I see. Oh. Man. All right, so hopefully this isn't terrible that we can move through this quickly because I do want to finish this up before we wrap up our test. So what are the coordinates of D prime? Um, it is oh, zero, negative one. I will point this out. Actually, let me write D really quickly. D were the coordinates negative 5, negative 3. E were the coordinates 
negative 3, 2. That looks like it. And then F, where the coordinates 4, 0. Okay. I want to point this out. What happened to the X value to get to 0? What happened to it? It moved to the right 5. Okay, is there anybody, anything else that we could add to that? Did someone say subtract? Did we subtract from negative 5? Yes, we did. You sure about that? No, we added 5 to it. I would say it translated to the right, didn't it? We so added 5 to it. We added 5. Hey, Taylor and I, y'all focus. We added 5 to the x. Oh, yeah, because it was translated to the right 5. What happened to the y? We added 2. We added 2. So without even looking over there, what am I going to do to the negative 3? Five. So I'm going to add 5 to get a 2, and here, add 2 to get 4. Do we see 2 comma 4? Yeah. You have to follow the instructions. Add 5 to 4, I get 9. Add 2 there to get 2. Is that what we see on the board? Looks like it. Yep. And notice this is important because when I look at B, if point A is on triangle D prime, E prime, F prime. Notice this is A prime, actually. and has these coordinates. Then what were the coordinates of A? <laughs> so these are the coordinates of A prime. That is A prime. The question is, what are the coordinates of A? So one, we need to notice that's the image. We're going backwards to the pre-image. So what am I going to do to X? Subtract how much? Remember, this vector is adding 5 to x to go backwards. Oh, we're using the same two. vector? Yes, it's the same translation, but... Oh. So then 6 minus 5 gives me... 1. And then what's the y going to be? Negative 1. Negative 1. I'm lost about how to find a point that isn't the point given, so... Yeah, same here. Okay, this is why we want to establish what the translation is. We know what's happening to the x. We're adding 5. We're adding 5, right? And to the y, we're adding 2. Okay. So if I was given 7, comma, negative 3, what would I do to that x? Add 5. What would I do to that y? Add 2. We just have to recognize this time that we have the image, and we're trying to go back to the pre-image. So instead of adding 5, we're going to subtract, subtract 5. So, so when we start from the points of... Plus five, two, like five, two, or? We take the point that we're given, and we add five to that x value. We take the y value we're given, we add two to that y value. You see how this is to the right five? Yes. That means we're adding five. But what I'm saying is, where do we know where our starting point is? It's given a. to us. That's what we're trying to find is the starting point for a. We're given six, one. Oh. Like, we're given this right here. Like, I'll never expect you to just make it up. I'll give you either the image or the pre-image. So what segments are parallel to vector PQ? See how PQ is right here? What's parallel to it? What is it? I don't think that's parallel to this. I don't think DF is parallel. It's close. Hey, what is this right here? Is this the same as that vector? Yes. Yeah. So would that be parallel to vector yeah. PQ? Yeah. So E prime. E, e prime. Notice it, Wait, it's what? starting at E. I literally drew it. There's E, uh -huh. and it's going to E prime. Isn't that parallel? Okay. What else is parallel to E, E prime? DE. DE is parallel? DE. DE. I would say D to D prime, right, isn't it? It's literally got the same vector. What else? F, F, F prime. Right. I've never seen Notice these, the, the vector between the pre-image and the image is the same as the translating vector. That's how we got those two points. And what's the slope of these segments? They're all right. Be careful. 2 over 5. Two fifths. Remember, even though I wrote this plus five, when I'm talking about slope, I got to rise first and then run. Minus two divided by five. 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 Minus two div
I appreciate you recognizing that and correcting it. That's good. Get better at it. All right, we'll have to pick up here on uh, Monday because we need to wrap up our tests. All right, so clear your desk off. You may have a calculator out.
viewers. So I would look back over your answers in general and definitely make sure that you go back and look at this. Okay, you need to write that equation. You may not say it on there, but you need to write those equations for number 18. So we don't need an A for these. 